So I begin the session of keratorefractive surgery fought and why, uh, revising our pentacam basics and discussing some of the case scenarios and discussing some of the case scenarios. So corneal topographers are indispensable tool in the evaluation of refractive surgeries. It's based on the sham plug principle. The Pentacam has two integrated cameras, one camera to detect the size and uh, orientation of the pupil and control fixation. The second camera is mounted on the rotating wheel to take pictures of the cornea and the anterior segment. This is a refractive, so we begin straight away with the analysis. This is a refractive port map printout in which we see the different uh, areas. We'll be discussing each of them a little in detail. We begin with looking at the quality of the scan, which should be okay, below which we see the Q value. The Q value is a measure of asphericity of the cornea within the central 6mm zone. The value varies from minus one to zero. In a normal sphere, the Q would be zero, whereas in a normal cornea, which is prolate, the value is in minus. After myopic ablation, it would become oblate and there the value becomes in plus. So most of the refractive surgeons would start by looking at the pachymetry maps. A value less than 470 needs further analysis of the maps. Now we look at the difference of the thinnest point with the apex. Anything greater than 10 microns is a red flag. The difference in thinnest pachy between the two eyes should be less than 30 microns. Anything beyond is again needs further uh, analysis. We'll also, I'll tell you about the angle kappa here. The angle kappa is the angle between the visual axis and the axis that passes through the pupil center. Clinical trials have shown that the visual axis passes somewhere in between the pupil center and the apex of the cornea and might be half the distance. So the number of the X coordinate should be less than 200. Anything beyond 200 means a decentered pupil and a significant angle kappa. The next is the Y coordinate. The Y coordinate or the location of the thinnest location should be less than 500 microns. And anything more than that is, uh, means uh, some abnormality. Next, what should I look by uh, looking at the elevation maps, the shape and the parameter? Uh, first, look at the check, check the miscellaneous settings for elevations, which can be any of the, uh, these. But the best, the ideal diameter of the best fit reference body is 8 mm, and the ideal float is the float mode. Now, in the elevation map, this is a symmetrical uh, sandy watch or an hourglass saddle pattern. Here we see a tongue or an island shape, which is a red flag. Then the elevation maps have got certain numerical values. In the, uh, these values, on the anterior elevation, anything beyond 15 micron, and in the posterior elevation, anything beyond 20 micron in the 6 mm zone uh, is a red flag. We also look at the difference of the central peak elevation back and elevation front, which should not be more than 10 microns. Anything beyond 10 is a red flag. The sagittal maps gives us the actual power of the cornea. The different patterns I'll be discussing later. Here we can see a symmetric bow tie, the two lobes A and B, which we can know how much are they, uh, what is the skew between them. And this skewing, uh, anything beyond 22 degree is a significant risk factor for ectasia. Borderline irregularities, if they mirror in both the corneas, which is called as enantiomorphism, can be accepted. We look at the different keratometric values. These keratometric uh, values, which uh, like K1 is the flat K, K2 is the steep K, KM is the mean keratometric power. And then we have the K max, which is the maximum keratometric power on the interior surface of the cornea. On the sagittal maps further, a K max value beyond 48 is a red flag. Here we can see in the different maps, the K max. And a K-max difference between the two eyes uh, should be less than two diopters. The different patterns that I just discussed would be round, oval, symmetric bow tie, a superior steepening or an inferior steepening. Here we see an asymmetric bow tie with a superior steepening. And here we see an asymmetric bow tie with an inferior steepening. So anything uh, beyond 1.5 diopter in inferior steepening or anything beyond 2.5 diopter in superior steepening is again a red flag. The tangential maps are more relevant to the cornea surgeons, which helps us to know the irregularity or the cone pattern. Uh, 
post refractive surgery to know the ablation, how well it is centered, the tangential maps can be used. And this is how the tangential map of, uh, would look like. It's mo a more noisy map. Coming on to the Bellin and Brosio display, which can be divided into two segments, the topography segment and the pachymetry section. The topography segment consists of three rows. The first row is of elevation map. The second is the exclusion maps. And the third is the difference map. The pachymetry section will be dealt later. So in a keratoconic uh, cornea, uh, what, uh, it would actually steepen the best fit sphere, thus making the cone less obvious. So what the printer can does is it uh, isolates 3.5 to, uh, to 4 millimeter hmm? of this location and it it that, that's the enhanced best fit sphere and in the third row we get a difference map from the normal and the enhanced best fit sphere schematically this is the best fit sphere and once we have uh, isolated this thinnest location so that's the enhanced best fit sphere making the cone more obvious and then in the last row where the difference map is there, which comes as flagged uh, in the anterior surface as beyond 7 is flat and in the posterior surface beyond 16 is again a red flag. Now in the pachymetry maps, in the pachymetry section, we saw two graphs. The first was the corneal thickness spatial profile graph, which displays the sequence of pachymetry values along concentric circles of increasing diameter beginning at and centered on the corneal thinness point. So the red curve that we see should fall between this black dotted uh, uh, lines. Uh, if it falls uh, be, be uh, uh, before the six seven zone, then that's, an, uh, that's a red flag. So this is a normal eye. We can have a quick slope or an S shape in compressed or keratoconus, flat shape in an edematous cornea or an inverted shape as in uh, um, PMD. So the percentage thickness increase again measures the percentage pachymetric increase starting from the thinnest point over concentric uh, hemimeridia throughout the 360 degree. So this is again abnormal. From coming on to the progression index, the progression index or the pachymetry progression index is calculated for all hemimeridia over the entire 360 degree of the cornea starting from the thinnest point. And here we see a minimum value and the maximum value, which is shown by this green arrow and the blue arrow. And this value has been calculated to be uh, less than one. Anything beyond 1.2 is again a red flag. It also gives us the ART max, the Ambrosio's relation thickness maximum, which is a ratio for, between the thinnest pachymetry and the pachymetry progression index. Uh, uh, the value from the normative data has been said to be 385. Anything less than this is suspect. The D values, uh, uh, a, a, a total D beyond 2.6 comes as a flag red. Earlier, the maps were having that the different D, uh, D, uh, different D values would be DF, DB, DP, DT, and D5. We will not go into the details of each, but D5 was there in the earlier maps. Now, the newer maps have DA, which is deviation of the ART max. The D is not a, uh, does not indicate an abnormal I. The large D is not a parameter. It's a regression analysis using all the parameters against the database of 1200 eyes. Now quickly, I'll go through some of the case scenarios. Like this is a 21 year male, uh, where we can see in the AR has a cylinder of minus 9.25 and an acceptance of minus four. This, this is the pentacam, the quad map, and uh, this is the pelin ambrosia. So it's very clear a case of keratoconus where we can see that the posterior elevation, which is showing beyond 60 microns, the symmetric coti, but all in steep uh, keratometry values. This is the left eye. Now, the second case that I have put is of a 28 year uh, female uh, having a very normal refraction of minus 3.25 in the right eye and minus 3.75 with minus 0.5 in the left eye. So this is the quad map and this is the Bellin Ambrosio. So in the Bellin Ambrosio, what are the suspect things we look? We look at the, uh, in, in this particular map, like we see the progressive index, the ART max, we see here the graph dipping down and the, the suspect D value. So in this case, we would like to wait. This is of the left eye. Now a third situation, this is a 26 year female, which has uh, having a stable pentacam and a stable refraction of 1.75 with minus two. And in the light type, minus two with minus 1.5. We can see a similar uh, art display, but 
But now look at the body. Map, I'd like to bring your attention to the cornea. Here we see a value of 10.9. So this is a small cornea. In a small cornea, because of more cornea volume, some of these values come flat. So we have to analyze the maps in totality, keeping all the factors in mind. Similar for the left eye, a flat, uh, bad display. But again, look at the cornea, 10.8. Now, a th uh, case four, this is a 31-year female uh, with a refraction of minus six cylinder in the right eye and minus 4.5 cylinder in the left eye. This is what the quad map looks like, looks fairly okay. But look at the K-max over here, it shows 50 diopters. <clears throat> so a K-max of 50 diopters does not essentially mean that it's a keratoconic eye. Uh, my case number five, which is a 23 year female, which uh, has been referred to rule out keratosis, and she has a refraction of one diopter sphere in the right eye, minus 3.25 cylinder in the left eye. This is her, what her map looks like. We see an inferior steeping in the posterior elevation. We again see uh, values of 70. Uh, the uh, bad display, this is the left eye. But look at the cornea. This, you see an inferior start in both the eyes, which explains all the abnormalities that we were seeing. Ma'am, apologies for the interruption, but uh, I request you to please sum it up. In okay, okay. Then I'll submit it because uh, sum it up because uh, I was delayed initially uh, because of some error. My one of my okay. our. Okay. Yeah, yeah, ma'am. No issues. Yeah. Okay, thank okay. You. So I'll sum it up. Oh, yeah, thank you so much, ma'am. Thanks. Thank you.